Okay, second cigarette of the day. Um, this is my third log. Five months ago, we met Deb Garcia. We gave her a camera and presented her with a challenge to quit smoking. I'm enjoying my last cigarette for the day, basically. That's pretty much it. But we can say our mission was a complete success. What's kind of has been like the most difficult part about trying to quit? I don't know. I guess I have this thing in my back of my head like it's not the right timing or it's not. I don't know. Like, I guess because of school and work and like my whole life in general, it's kind of like. I don't know, it seems really hard to stop, like, right now, right now. So. Deb is not alone. As Andy Anthal, a policy coordinator for the Chicago Tobacco Prevention Project, explains. I think if somebody's trying to quit, I think that um, to let them know that, first of all, if they're not successful on their first attempt, it's okay. It's very common for people to try to quit smoking, you know, five, six, seven, ten, fifteen times before it really sticks. We like to consider that practice. It's very much something that has to be worked at um, to, to get right over time. And so I do talk to a lot of people who say, oh, I tried to quit and it didn't work, I failed. Um, so there's this per perception that because it didn't work the first time, they should never try again. Dianthal also yeah. says, sometimes it's okay to do some gentle urging. What if you tried to cut out the morning, sir? Um, I don't know, like, I'm just, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just so scared that it, for some reason, because it's such a habit, like, I'm so scared that it's going to, like, fuck up my morning, or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, Which I don't know. Which one do you think would be the easiest to cut out? I don't know. That's a hard thing. I think, like, that's why I haven't progressed in, like, lowering it from four, because I think that's pretty much as low as I'm right now. My head is going or I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> okay. What one thing that I definitely see when it comes to age is that people who are younger um, are oftentimes they when you talk to them about the health risks, it's not as quite as impactful. Um, a lot of times when people are younger, they're thinking, you know, that's never going to happen to me. Um, and then sort of on the flip side, when you're talking to somebody who's been smoking for thirty or forty years, it starts to feel like more of an impossibility to them to quit smoking, they're more entrenched in their habits, and the idea becomes more insurmountable. Um, so I think, that, I think that there are challenges either way. Deb started smoking when she was 14. According to statistics from the Center of Disease Control, about 4,000 teens under 18 start smoking every day. Some of the major contributing factors that lead to teen smoking include low socioeconomic status, peer approval, low self-esteem, and like in Deb's case, smoking by her parents. Well, you've been seeing your mom smoke since you were younger. Do you feel like that was at all any influence on you? Oh yeah, like, like I remember being like six years old and enjoying the smell of cigarettes by me, or like the smell of her hands afterwards. And I guess it's that thing that like, cause I hardly ever saw my mom when I was younger. Cause you know, she worked, there was nine of us to feed and it was just like, hectic and stuff, so I guess the only times when I got to see her was probably after she got home from smoking a cigarette, and that's probably the set that I find, like, nurturing, or kind of like, that's... Deb is trying to break the cycle, though, and if these diary entries did anything for her, it was give her time to reflect on what would make her quit. Like, if I ever got pregnant or something, will I stop, and... In the back of my head, there's always a little devil saying that I can sneak some squares or nobody will notice or I can blame it on somebody at work or I can blame it on somebody at school and that scares me because I can't even force myself to stop smoking even if I was ever have a kid. And I don't want to be one of those women who smoke while pregnant. When people say, I'm not ready to quit smoking, I don't, it shouldn't be an invitation to sort of badger them into it. However, I would 
I would typically do some gentle urging around what readiness looks like for someone. You know, when, when will you know that you're ready? Is it when you realize that you are having a difficult time walking briskly down the street? Um, are you going to be ready when you're pregnant? You know, is that what's going to induce you to, to make that decision for your health? Because I've known so many women that have smoked while pregnant, while breastfeeding, and still do. And using the excuse that it's helping their stress, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I know it helps me, but there's just some times when I just feel that it's empowering me. readiness means and and the fact that you're not necessarily going to wake up one morning and feel like I'm ready I'm going to do it today it, I think that readiness does require some work we couldn't get Deb to quit cold turkey or even give up her morning cigarette but she is more aware of what it would take to get would to that you point say that there's maybe like a timeline or anything that you would kind of like we're like all right if even if you're not pregnant you don't want to be smoking by this time um Probably by, I don't know, my 30s. Hope to stop by then. Hopefully stop by then. So, I mean, your 30s. How old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm only 22. <laughs> so, I mean, does that mean that part of you is not really wanting to quit? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what that means. <laughs> exactly what that means, but Jesus, if I can't control myself physically, I don't know what to do with myself anymore. I just hope. I just hope. That stop. This has been a look into one person's journey to quit smoking. If you or someone you know is interested in resources to quit smoking, visit bethemedia.tumblr.com and click on the resources page. This diary has been made possible by the community grant from the Chicago Tobacco Prevention Project.